Not so long ago, I was asking the question, what do people love about autumn? And I ask that because my favorite seasons are spring and summer and I definitely prefer the warmth. And I was feeling a little miserable knowing that those seasons were coming to an end and it was time for autumn and for things to get a little bit rainy and cold. And I wasn't disappointed by the answers I got. I really appreciate everyone who took the time to send me all of the things that they love about autumn. It really inspired me to go out and try and make the most of the season and I've definitely been changing my opinion as time has gone on. And if I had any doubt whatsoever about the loveliness of autumn, the visit to this site this week would definitely have changed my mind. This week I visited a deer park and it's the first time I've ever been here. There are three types of deer here. There are red deer, fallow deer and seeker deer. And honestly, I thought my painting this week would somehow incorporate a deer. Usually if I see a deer, it's a roe deer and it's a very fleeting glimpse as it is running in the opposite direction. So it was unusual to come to a place like this and actually see a whole herd of them. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an image of a deer that I could have turned into this week's painting. It's currently rutting season, so it was really important to keep our distance and not get too close to the deer. So from the footpath, this was about as good as the images got from my phone camera because I don't have a camera with a longer lens. But fortunately, Everything else was so lovely that I knew I would not be lost for painting inspiration this week. And as I said before, if I hadn't have been convinced of the loveliness of autumn by now, the trip to this site would definitely have changed my mind. Usually I associate spring with the busiest season for wildlife because there's so much activity, there's nest building and courtship displays, but actually there's a lot of wildlife activity in the autumn. Squirrels are busy burying supplies for the winter and there was a lot of COVID activity around this lovely old church. There's also the deer rut which happens at this time of year rather than the spring so although I didn't see any of that when I visited, that is something that's going on in the background. And there's still a lot of bird life around including these lovely black headed gulls who lose their black head in the winter time. And of course, beautiful swans, which I've seen on a couple of occasions now for these videos, but this one looked absolutely lovely in this sunlight on this very peaceful lake. And who needs wildflowers when you've got such a great variety of fungi? <laughs> Here are some amethyst deceiver, I believe, and another type of mushroom, which I really don't know the name of, but I love how it was growing out of this log here. And I guess we can't talk about the loveliness of autumn without mentioning color, and that was definitely a huge part of why I enjoyed this visit so much. And it's not just the color of the trees, although they were absolutely spectacular, but it's also the color of the whole atmosphere, if that makes any sense. It was so changeable and the sky was constantly shifting. There was this beautiful blue in the background sometimes. There was this purple haze and these lovely watery yellow clouds. It was so beautiful. It's very difficult to put it into words. So I'm going to share some of my favorite moments in a bit of a compilation before we get to the painting.
with such beautiful surroundings, you might be wondering why I ended up painting a jackdaw. Well, I will tell you. <laughs> when I go on these visits, it's not just to find inspiration for this week's painting, it's also to find inspiration for some larger pieces that I'll hopefully be working on in the background. Thanks to this trip, I've now got some great references that I'll be able to use for some lovely landscapes, including some tiny deer in the background. But for this week's painting, I decided to go for something that brought me a lot of happiness, and it was a very friendly jackdaw. Sometimes the opportunity just presents itself and you've got to paint a jackdaw and it was right in front of me It was so close that I was able to get a really nice picture of it I love the background there was the lake and the reflections and I thought that will do for this week's painting So as usual, I'm starting out with burnt sienna just to outline the scene and then I'll go over with some thin down oil paint Just to block everything out and give me a rough idea of what it's gonna look like later on down the line One of the hardest parts about this week's painting was just getting the position of the bird quite right. It was difficult trying to figure out where it was going to sit in the scene, but I think eventually it worked out okay. One of the things I'm really enjoying about this series is that it's really changing the way I approach my artwork. I've been doing this for a little while now and I feel like my goals as an artist in the beginning were very different to what they are now. Initially my main priority was just to become an artist and I thought that no matter what I was creating or painting I would be happy as long as I could just be doing art for a living. I spent the majority of my time sitting by my easel trying to paint, spending most of my time indoors and wondering why I wasn't feeling that inspired. What this Artist Diaries series and making these videos has helped me to realise is that it is equally important to spend some time away from the easel, finding the things that inspire me in the first place. I love being an artist and I love painting for a living and getting to be creative every day and art on its own is a great passion and something that is wonderful to be enthusiastic about but I hadn't been using it to its fullest potential. Art itself is a great standalone hobby but one of the great things about it is that it is a fantastic tool in which you can share with the world some of your other completely unrelated passions. And for me, that includes nature and wildlife and all of the things outside that make me stop and say, wow, every now and then. It's not that I feel prioritizing the technical side of my artwork was a mistake. I think it's also equally important to practice and I learn a lot during my time at the easel. But the way I approach my art now is to spend an even amount of time practicing the technical side and also getting outside and living my life and finding the things that inspired me to paint in the first place. In other words, I guess I just needed to get out a little more. <laughs> I definitely lacked focus in those early years and I struggled to figure out exactly what I wanted to say with my art and what I wanted to do with this career. And I'm definitely not saying that I've got it all figured out now because I do not and I still very much consider myself to be at the beginning of my career as an artist but I do feel like with each passing week and passing month I am getting a little bit closer to where I'm supposed to be. And these videos are helping me to strike a balance between spending time painting and spending time in nature finding the inspiration to paint in the first place. There were so many times I would admire other artists work and I would think how on earth do they come up with such great ideas and where does that inspiration come from and I thought maybe they're just surrounded by lovely scenery or they have a real clear vision about what they wanted to create. It took me longer than I would care to admit to figure out that all I really needed to do was spend time doing the things that I love so that I would have that inspiration too. 
I think every artist is different and we're not all going to be inspired by the same things. Not every artist is going to be inspired by wildlife and nature, but I found that that is definitely the place where I gain most of my inspiration. Thanks to this series, I now have a great stockpile of reference images that I will hopefully be able to use for many paintings in the future. And whereas before, I would sit by my easel and wonder why I had no motivation to paint and I had no idea what I wanted to create, now I am full of ideas and I have so many paintings that are currently just in my mind, but that I really want to be able to work on in the future. Thanks to this series, I've already created six unique little studies that never would have been made if I hadn't have been on these visits. I've painted fungi, I've painted horses both at a distance and close up in the rain, I painted the lovely swan in the misty conditions at Temple Museum, and this week was all about this friendly jackdaw that came to visit at lunchtime. Not only have I been able to create these studies, but I've also managed to stockpile images to create a lot of future projects. And even more importantly, I have got the inspiration now to actually go ahead and complete those projects. I feel like I was lacking the experiences needed to make my artwork a little bit more meaningful and to give me the motivation to be more creative. But now hopefully I am on the right track. I just want to take this time to say thank you to everybody who watches along with these videos. I really hope you're enjoying this series. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I really love creating these videos, but it is even better to know that there are people out there who really enjoy watching them. This feels like it's been a little bit more rambly, but I hope you've enjoyed watching it anyway. I really liked creating this jackdaw painting and it inspired me to talk about the things I've talked about today. As always with these paintings, I could have spent much longer on it. I try to restrict myself to about three hours tops, but occasionally it does go a little over that just so that I can get these filmed and recorded in time to release them on a near enough weekly basis. At some point I would like to share some larger paintings with you, but that means actually having to create them in the first place, so that's probably going to take a little bit longer to achieve, but I am looking forward to being able to film some of that in the future. But for now, here is the finished jackdaw painting. I really hope you like it. Please let me know what you think, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.